The Checkpoint is presented by GM Pharma, the first international multinational pharmaceutical company in Georgia. GM Pharma, to serve those who need it most. Imamura Akira, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Japan to Georgia, called the Russia-Ukraine war a global challenge. He noted that with TV show Forbes Talks, according to the ambassador, Asia cannot turn a blind eye to the events on the European front because it also affects them. As Imamura Akira notes, Russia's invasion of Ukraine prompted many world countries to cooperate, including Georgia and Japan. More in Yurgi Sagaze's interview with Imamura Akira. Ambassador, uh, going back to early 2021, that's the period when an investment agreement has been signed between Georgia and Japan, which aims to encourage, let me quote, and protect investments between two countries. Uh, do you think that it was necessary to sign this agreement? And uh, what are the results mm -hmm. coming back to the nowadays? Yes. I think it's very significant to sign this treaty uh, with Georgia at this point. Uh, of course, Georgia has a very liberal and open uh, economy, and its investment climate is uh, uh, quite uh, renowned the uh, whole world over. Uh, but what uh, investors want is long-term uh, perspective, their long-term assurance of their investment assets. So, uh, in other words, they need a stable stability and predictability. And um, so this treaty uh, ensures the, these two most important uh, factors, stability and the predictability for invest investors, uh, through binding Japan and Georgia, uh, the, one of the most advanced uh, uh, rules and standards uh, that both countries, both governments should uh, uh, abide by. So I'm sure through this uh, uh, treaty uh, this will uh, give this assurance that I mentioned and encourage investment uh, both ways. Uh, TEPCO at the same time is a great example of the interest and TEPCO is not an ordinary investor which is uh, how to say it making emotional decisions. You are very much aware that there are some emotional investors around a lot. But at the same time, uh, TEPCO did it and did it a few years ago. Uh, are there other Japanese companies which are interested in Georgia and what are the main spheres of their interest? Mm. Uh, I think TEPCO is quite satisfied with its uh, investment in Dariali uh, hydropower plant near Kazubegi Mountain. It's a very beautiful area. I visited it. Um, and its investment, its decision to invest in Daliali gave a very positive signal to other uh, potential Japanese investors. So I know uh, already a couple of them are uh, visiting Georgia and looking for uh, good projects. Uh, mainly, of course, in hydropower because you have uh, so many potential uh, project sites in Georgia now uh, uh, selected and under uh, study. Uh, but also in a uh, um, more wider uh, sphere of uh, uh, recyclable energy. They are quite interested in other areas like uh, wind or solar, so, or even new energies. So um, um, we should encourage it through, uh, first of all, Georgian government's uh, arrangement, for example, the power purchase agreement that I'm sure will be in place for those investors, but also from Japanese side, including uh, um, the recent agreement we signed in uh, September on so-called joint crediting mechanism. Mm -hmm. This is to uh, provide uh, up to 50% of the project cost from Japanese side through grant assistance to Japanese companies who will uh, uh, cooperate with Georgian side on any projects that will lead to a reduction of emission. Emission. Yes. So this is a, a very uh, strong push towards uh, Japanese companies' move uh, to Georgia. I mean, motivation, uh, strong one, whoever yes. is connected to the green economy, yes. they're going to be funded additionally, I mean, the Japanese side, mm. additionally 50%. Yes. So we're looking for good projects, and uh, if uh, uh, any of the Georgian side, it could be private sector, uh, public sector, or NGO, any entity in Georgia that 
uh, can come up with ideas cooperating with Japanese uh, companies to reduce emission. Uh, it's not only just uh, uh, recyclable energy, what I talked about, mm -hmm. but also replacing old equi older equipment with new ones to uh, raise the energy efficiency, and that means reducing the emission could be eligible. So yeah. we welcome many of those projects uh, that we can pass on to our private sector. We also have statistics where whether Japan is uh, like uh, is among top five, sometimes top three, uh, within the investors list for Georgia. Mm. At the same time, besides having TEPCO, we also have uh, Toyota among the big investors of this year. Uh, going to be more specific in this regards, do you see a potential for having uh, more attractiveness for Japanese car manufacturers to be more active in Georgia? Mm. Well, I think uh, Georgia is regarded from our car industries as a, a, a very good uh, uh, export market mm -hmm. and the gateway to uh, South Caucasus because uh, you have FTA with other countries, including Azerbaijan. So car manufacturers is uh, quite interested in uh, uh, looking at Georgia as this potential. So um, they're doing very well in car sales uh, in Georgia and Azerbaijan, uh, our uh, top makers are quite active. And um, uh, what they can contribute and contributing now is uh, to uh, the uh, uh, betterment of the environment. Environment. Yes, especially through uh, uh, low emission cars. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very glad to see lots of cars, uh, Japanese cars, uh, operating in Georgia and Azerbaijan. Uh, elsewhere, especially those hybrid cars with high efficiency. Uh, but uh, as we, of course, trade export our cars, there's a question of uh, uh, end-of-life vehicles. If you uh, drive your car, it's a, of course, eventually it end up, end up as a kind of a, a end of life, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to dispose them in an environmentally safe way. And this is something also we are quite interested in, that we can we're ready to share our experience. Experience. Yes. Uh, I want to share with you some export data in the trade turnover with Japan during the eight, last eight months. Uh, I mean, the current year, which was decreased uh, by 25% to the same period of the previous year, amounted 10.4 in US dollars. But wine, fruit juices, honey are within the top 10 mm -hmm. of the products. Uh, and I'm talking about the list of the agriculture products. Uh, but we both know and understand that the share is too small. These two years, maybe it's uh, not everything and can, cannot cover all the direction, but quite enough for you to have a, a consideration. What else can Georgia export to Japan? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, Japan's uh, uh, food self-sufficiency rate, so-called, is 38%. That means we can only produce domestically our food up to 38% only. And that's a very small amount. And we are exporting more than 6% of our food. It's uh, based on, I think, calorie calculation. Uh, but still, 6% is a huge amount. And uh, when we look at Georgia, as a potential, it's agricultural export. I think there's a, a complementary role uh, of, of trade relationship between Japan and Georgia. And I think Georgia can do more to export its agricultural products uh, to Japan, especially through um, uh, increasing its uh, quality of agricultural products and its uh, uh, productivity. Productivity. Yes. And uh, uh, of course, uh, you should uh, work on those more. But we're also helping you through provision of uh, equipment. Yeah. For example, uh, recently I've been to Akumeta municipality mm -hmm. and we provided uh, refrigerators uh, for its famous uh, cheese industry. Yes. yes, as one example. And also, uh, uh, we are quite interested in sharing our experience in uh, productivity, uh, 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 rising in the productivity in Georgia, especially uh, the, the organization of production of our agriculture. We are 
quite experienced in uh, a cooperative organization. And that's the very basis of any individual farmers to uh, 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 increase its efficiency. So that's another thing that we're de doing, that's sharing information. So, so, so two products I want to be more specific mm -hmm. of. First is honey. Mm -hmm. Japan is in top five where we export honey most mm. of. And uh, how did the demand from Japan appear? Are mm. you familiar with the story and how Japan is becoming one of the main exporters of the Georgian honey? Mm. Well, as you only once again trade figures, uh, we only produce 7% of our domestic consumption of honey. Same story. Same story. So we need 93% coming from other countries. And uh, uh, we import mainly, as of now, from China or Argentine or Hungary, those countries. So that's why Georgia's portion is still low. But uh, um, uh, I do not know concretely how it uh, demand appeared in Japan about Georgian honey. But my guess uh, is that uh, it's related to Jap Jap Japanese people's health consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, honey is, of course, very um, uh, good for your health, and it's uh, lots of uh, uh, healthy ingredients in there. So Japanese consumers are always looking for, you know, uh, honey that is good for your health. And um, the the ones that we are importing, I'm pretty much sure that uh, it's somehow associated with Georgia's uh, uh, image in Japan, uh, related to uh, the. Uh, uh, natural or organic, organic food. Organic yes. food. Because for already a long time, uh, we've been eating uh, matsoni of Georgia. I was eating in matsoni while I was still in Japan, before, even before I was appointed as an ambassador to Georgia. And it has Georgian flag and uh, uh, Georgian mother uh, or woman uh, with the cow. So uh, we are quite uh, um, used to this image of Georgia. And I think uh, honey was most likely associated with healthy food. Organic yes. wine, yeah. Uh, at the same time, I want to speak more about Georgian wine, which is, according to all the researches, Mr. Ambassador, is the most expensive in Japan. I mean, the Georgian wine, mm -hmm. uh, USA and Germany. Uh, how well Georgian wine is known in Japan? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm very glad that uh, the recognition of Georgian wine mm -hmm. is uh, rising. And uh, the high price is probably a reflection of a uh, uh, high appreciation of the consumers. So that means they uh, approve the high quality and good taste uh, of Georgian wine. Um, I, I think it's going on together with other totally uh, uh, in related, unrelated areas, uh, movement in those areas like uh, uh, Georgian sumo wrestler uh, Tochinoshin is becoming so popular, he's probably most known Georgian in Japan. Or uh, Georgian food, shukumeruri, is now very famous in Japan. You can buy uh, ready-to-made, uh, ready-to-eat uh, shukumeruri in Japanese stores. So those uh, uh, awareness about Georgia in Japan is rising. That's why I think uh, Georgian wine is doing better. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, the amount, again, like honey, is still relatively small mm -hmm. com compared to other countries' wine. So um, I think you have to strengthen the, uh, the branding strategy even more. Uh, for my, my suggestion, I, I would say, could be, uh, again here, uh, use the uh, health consciousness of mm -hmm, Japanese mm -hmm. people and emphasize uh, the uh, organic taste of your um, Cuevo wine. Because Cuevo wine is uh, very unique in Georgia. Nobody else is seriously uh, producing, Produced, only yeah. Georgian. And it's related to this organic uh, processing that you have uh, for more than uh, 8,000 years. So that's, I think, the one very important uh, branding strategy for you. While following your local activities, we see you're traveling a lot in Georgia, within the Georgian regions. I would like to talk a bit about tourism. Japan is, uh, is always like among the top 10 like visitors mm -hmm. for Georgia, but uh, geographical distance is uh, absolutely understandable personally for mm -hmm. me, but at the same time, it's covered. 
how does it match, Mr. Ambassador? Could you be so kind to explain to me mm -hmm. that Japan, located so far from Georgia, is still much paying interest to the local tourism, mm -hmm. local destinations, etc. and so on? Yes. I think uh, Japanese tourists are uh, quite interested in uh, experience-based tourism. So they, of course, like beautiful scenery, but they love to uh, experience its history, culture, and arts, and of course food, which Georgia has all and can offer even more. Um, and they're ready to spend a lot of money, uh, so there's a huge potential for a huge future increase. I visited, for example, uh, uh, your Georgia National uh, Museum, where you can see uh, 2000 BC uh, golden uh, necklace. Yes. Uh, so, and it's just uh, an unimaginable for any Japanese tourist because 2000 BC is a time when Japanese were just hunting. No metal objects, no metal tools at all. So it's an amazing culture that we can discover and not uh, much known to Japanese people. Um, or, um, you know, the uh, Georgian uh, monastery's uh, beautiful fresco uh, paintings, uh, very un unknown still in Japan, and beautiful uh, polyphony mm. songs and music. So those are the experiences that uh, Japanese tourists can, can uh, um, uh, spend time for and Georgia can offer. And uh, I would suggest two things. That we don't still have a direct flights between yeah. Japan and uh, Georgia. So we need it, but uh, for as a first step, maybe we should uh, uh, bring in a group of people, Japanese tourists, to, to use the charter flights. It's just an... So it's going to be the first good yes, step. Pi yeah. pilot step. Pilot step. Yes. And second suggestion I would make uh, would be uh, uh, bring, invite, maybe your tourism agency mm -hmm. can invite uh, Japanese tour operators, tourism companies. Uh, to come here and experience what I've just uh, described and then bring back that experience to Japan to, Japan. to organize a tour for Japanese tourists. At the same time for the more awareness and things and etc. Yes. Uh, in one of your interviews, Mr. Ambassador, you mentioned that it was a bit earlier mm -hmm. that Georgia plays the role of an important corridor and you're talking about the middle corridor, but a developed infrastructure additionally is needed. What do you advise to our country in this mm. regard? Yes. Uh, we've been paying a lot of attention to Georgia's this unique role of uh, bringing uh, that, com uh, tying uh, the north and, I mean, uh, east and west, west together, Asia and Europe. So it's a bridge between the two continents. and. Um, this role in recent years uh, has been increasing, especially in the recent months, uh, because of this increasing demand of uh, cargo that goes through a middle corridor. And uh, recently uh, we have uh, uh, held a business forum that brought in more than 15 Japanese you companies. Did. And uh, one of the panels were uh, devoted to discussions on this middle corridor, how we can increase the, uh, the investment and uh, cope with this uh, increasing demand of cargo. And uh, uh, I think uh, uh, key solutions should be to upgrade your uh, railway uh, um, capacity as well as uh, ports. And uh, I would say the, uh, the key to everything is to uh, uh, make all those uh, uh, cargo flow in uh, um, containers. So containerization uh, is still in the uh, very earlier stage. Um, for that, uh, of course, you need to invest more in uh, deep sea ports. I'm sure uh, Poti or Anaglia uh, is uh, being discussed now. So um, those are the, uh, the uh, possible solution for coping with this uh, increasing demand. Uh, at the same time, you are definitely aware and uh, following all the challenges happening around the country. Mm -hmm. We are one of the neighbors of Russia, which invaded to Ukraine. And uh, at the same time, uh, you definitely have and sharing with your colleagues and uh, with your Georgian allies some sorts. Uh, we can call them advices or sharing experience about the possible fast and progress in economy for Georgia. 
Do you have any ideas for that? Yes. Um, it's, uh, well, first of all, you said that uh, uh, Russia invaded Ukraine and occupies Russia. Actually, I mean, uh, uh, Georgia. Uh, but actually, uh, Japan is also occupied illegally by Russians from 1945. So it's even longer than you. Um, so we have this common experience of being uh, occupied by uh, our uh, common northern neighbor. So that's one of the challenges. We know, both have. We both have. Uh, and because of the territorial uh, 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 size that, uh, that George, uh, Russians are in, uh, occupying mm -hmm. uh, Georgia, of course, has an economic impact. So, uh, of course, uh, we support your territorial integrity and we're supporting your IDPs, uh, providing jobs to them. That's uh, key to uh, any economic issue, social issue uh, that needs to be uh, solved for Georgia. Uh, but ap apart from this most difficult challenge uh, for, for Georgia, um, uh, what is uh, needed is, uh, I think, uh, gradually move uh, to uh, uh, start more investment in uh, uh, manufacturing. I know that Georgia has very good uh, uh, financial sector or uh, services sector in general, but uh, still uh, the manufacturing sector is in the making. And uh, for example, uh, I, I know that some of the Turkish companies are doing good investments to produce uh, uh, jobs. Uh, yes, jobs uh, through uh, apparel, the clothing, and to be exported to Europe. Uh, Japan has also invested in Turkey heavily, so maybe they can use the uh, final phase of their production uh, in the Georgian territory to mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, produce, mm -hmm. uh, export it to, to export to the uh, European Union. That's one example for manufacturing. And, um, uh, for example, car uh, parts industry in Japan is looking for uh, cost-effective uh, destinations right, niches, right, yeah. yes, right now. They are also heavily invest in Europe, also in Turkey. They're producing uh, uh, car parts for assembly, but uh, they need a new frontier. And Georgia could be a one good of place the yes, can candidates in the future. So you, you have to, of course, train your labor and uh, create more better environments, uh, even further. But uh, I think there's a potential for future manufacturing too. The Checkpoint is presented by GM Pharma, the first international multinational pharmaceutical company in Georgia. GM Pharma, to serve those who need it most.